Keltner and you're here on Soapbox. We're going to be talking about a very important function of the peace movement, which is counter-recruiting, the answer to the military's pressure to get more people to join in their murderous obsession. But before we do that, we want to thank the people who contribute to our show and make it possible. And that really starts with Pieces Pizza, which is on 21st Street between M and N. And Pieces Pizza supplies the pizza for our crew. We always say that the crew works for peace, and it works for pizza, which makes it a very inexpensive crew. But it's really delightful that Pieces does this. 21st between M and N, and it's open late at night. It's a fun place to hang out, especially when the evenings are warm, because it's right on the sidewalk, and you can watch people passing by like a really big city. It's fun. The other people who help us out a lot are the people at Humor Times. And that's James Israel, who's been putting out this little, uh, actually the comic press was his first uh, proposition. It's filled with cartoons, both from left and right, but a lot of good commentators, primarily from the left-hand side of the uh, column. And that would be Jim Hightower and uh, <clears throat> Andy Borowitz, who's extremely funny. Comic writing about politics is hard to come by. And it's a wonderful little gift, now that we're moving into the gift season, it's a wonderful gift for people in your family, whether they agree with you or not. Uh, make them laugh about the current political scene. And we thank James Israel because he advertises our show. Now, here I have the real folks that really make the program possible. I have f four people here from Peace Action, from Veterans for Peace. Uh, and uh, what, are you, what would you like to be aligned with? Your I'm also associated with the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. The, he's not a woman, but he's associated <laughs> with the Women's Le International League for Peace and Freedom. Uh, and we're all for peace and working on it the right way. I want to introduce, first of all, Maria Cornejo. Maria, give your tiny spiel immediately because there's something that we want from you. We come to you for free, of course, and uh, at enormous personal expense, driving all the way out from Midtown to the East Sacramento. Maria, what, is, what do we want from people who are watching? Well, the most important thing we want to bring home today is this is a, a combination group between veterans and non-veterans, and we are working to make sure that students in classrooms in all high schools have access to accurate information about their options, that if they want to serve their country, we want to, we want to talk to them about AmeriCorps and Peace Corps. If they want to travel, we want to give them information about other options. But first, we need to get to students and give them accurate information. So if anyone out watching today is a teacher or knows a teacher, Please give them our information, give them our name, Sacramento Area Peace Action. We have a committee, a group that will go into your classroom and give a free presentation to your high school students. And <clears throat> about how long does the presentation take? It's roughly 45 to 50 minutes. We've done, sometimes some teachers have, have, have double classes. We can do an hour and a half. We can do 30 minutes, whatever the teacher has. Usually we go to high school um, history teachers, government teachers, social science, but we've done um, English kinds. classes as well and, and others, so it's a well, pleasure. It's, it, the, so the help that we need from you are if there are teachers watching or if there are people related to teachers who would be willing to, to invite these stellar people to talk about their experiences because young people do not have access to ideas about alternatives and in this terrible economy they need to know that. So, and let's go to you Barry Binks to start with, what got you interested in counter-recruiting or, and or Veterans for Peace? Well, really the war started uh, in 2001, so for 14 years I've been an anti-war activist and uh, it's continuing 14 years is long enough to lose the war and we should get out of it. Well, we have not won a war. When was the last time we won a war? You know, I really love it that we spend 500 billion of our discretionary monies per year, and we can't win a war. And when we take on somebody who has an Air Force, we'll really be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we've gone after third world countries that don't have any. So did you have personal experience in the war, Barry? No, I didn't. I was fortunate I was in the military before Vietnam, and a lot of my friends did go to Vietnam, and I can tell them that uh, it ain't over when you get out. I mean, a lot of them have had uh, problems, medical problems that the military doesn't take care of, and they've had mental problems, they've had 
all of the, the things that most of them won't talk about until they get into a group with Veterans for Peace and the brothers get together and talk about it. And even though I wasn't in Vietnam, they sit down and want to tell me their experiences. And uh, I can see that they need, to, they need to talk about it. It's such an experience. Wow, that is so interesting. So one of the things that Veterans for Peace serves as is a listening board oh, to yeah. the painful experiences that vets have gone through right. that right. they don't dare share. Absolutely. Well, it is against human nature to kill another human being. I, I do believe that. I mean, uh, aside from your ex, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Then it's excusable, possibly, <laughs> but but to kill a stranger, you know, or even to kill somebody in your neighborhood, that goes against really, a, I believe, something profound in human nature. And as everyone knows, I'm sure everyone knows that the generals in what war found that soldiers weren't shooting enough. They could give them the guns and they'd face the enemy and they would not shoot enough. Does, does anyone remember this? Right, yeah. And that's when they instituted the training to turn men into men and women into kill animals. So that, or not an animal, kill machines. Well, and take it away from the human being now too because they're developing autonomous drones that they can program their computer in the drone to pick out the target and kill the target without any human input so they can avoid the whole situation with that. So, but then we know that those Computers never make a mistake, do they? No, it's lucky that we never kill any innocent people, period, really. And the, awful, and the interesting thing to me is that the people working the drones are coming down with PTSD. Absolutely, absolutely. I have two friends that were analysts and uh, drone operators that uh, had PTSD, uh, had to get out of the military, uh, and they both have left the country. They're out of the country now. They, they've gone they became so disgusted with... Well, they're, one of them's protesting over in Germany right now, and the other one's going to school in France. So they have to get away, and they, they did have PTSD. They got out with PTSD. They're getting medical care, but uh, it's hit or miss. One of the big problems with medical care is they, this stuff is so top secret, they can't tell anybody what they did. Why do you have PTSD? Well, I can't tell you. It's a secret. So wow. How do you get treatment for that? Oh, that's, I mean, that's really a kind of torture to put somebody it's through absolutely. experience that almost knocks them out psychologically and then forbid them to speak about it. Exactly. That's a recipe for disaster. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's one way to take care of uh, the expensive veterans' benefits. <laughs> they kill themselves. <laughs> how many people kill themselves in the military? Is it three a day? 20 a day. Yeah, it's 20, 22. 22. 22. 22 suicides a day of soldiers and ex -soldiers, former soldiers. At Beale Air Force Base, the Airman of the Year at Beale Air Force Base turned around the next month and committed suicide. Airman of the Year. You know, let, let's keep these thoughts in mind. This is such a bloodthirsty country. You know, I, I don't watch much TV, much pr commercial TV. I don't have a TV. I like, to say, I like to say I make TV. I don't watch TV. But uh, I was visiting my sister, so I watched a lot of our TV. What bloodthirsty, violent, uh, pro-military, anyway. Yes. I can, and then when people say, oh, it doesn't create violence. It just desensitizes you. Oh, oh okay. Daniel Garza. Yes, ma'am. You are a member of VFP, Veterans for Peace. And uh, Peace Action as well. And also Peace Action. Yes, ma'am. And so what drove you to make this step? Um, I am a veteran of uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom. Um, I was in the U.S. Navy for six years, uh, from 2003 to 2009. And um, just in the middle of my first deployment, I got disgusted with the war. It wasn't doing anything. There was no, there was no goal. There was no finishing. There was no way to win. And uh, to see our aircraft leave the aircraft carrier with bombs and to come back without them, um, you wonder where they went. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of statistics out there. Um, some estimate over a million civilians in Iraq alone have been killed. Um, and that it bothered me. It, it, it really affected me. So when I got out, I, I really wanted to do something to, to help change that uh, mentality that, that we always have to invade, that we always have to go to war. 
I just I, I'm I'm inviting any any viewer to go to your computer and pull up Vladimir Putin's speech in front of the United Nations. Incredible. I saw that. That was very good. Isn't that a knockout speech? If we had one leader who would speak without rhetoric, you know, first Obama got up and said, when we, when we go to the Middle East, we're bringing democracy and a chance for a better future and a chance to build a stable government and a, and a democracy. And then Vladimir Putin gets up and really says what happened. Yes. You know, but he says directly to us, you're going to have to rise above your ongoing desire to dominate. And he just, he addresses so many zingers to the people of this country and to the leaders of this country that it shows you why they're working so hard to demonize him. Anyway, um, you wanted to make some kind of restitution, really. Exactly. Um, just, I mean, I feel a little guilty, you know, for having been part of it. Uh, I, I didn't kill anybody directly per se, but just my indirect actions definitely made a difference. But what got you in there? Um, I, getting out of high school, um, I really didn't have a place to go. I didn't have really a good future to look at. Um, I talked to the recruiters, they promised me travel. They promised me education, uh, that my education will be paid for. Uh, they promised me a trade um, and they kept their end of the deal, but it's making a deal with the devil. I mean, you, there's a lot of, of things that go along with that, that they don't tell you. Um, and, and getting out of the military, they don't, they don't teach you how to be a civilian again. When you first get out, there's all kinds of things you're going through. You used to be in charge of, of people and, and millions of dollars worth of equipment, and you get out and you feel empty because you don't have that anymore and you don't have that that drive, there's nothing pushing you, there's nothing, there's nothing there. So th there's, there's a lot of reasons why we have 33% um, of, of the homeless in the streets are veterans, that there's reasons for that. Mm -hmm. um, and the VA is doing a really poor job of taking care of, uh, of our veterans. Um, I had a personal friend, my, um, my supervisor on deployment just committed suicide this summer um, and he wasn't getting the help he, he needed. Well, you know, in the I Ching, it talks about when the warriors come back from battle, especially if they're victorious, they have to be sequestered for a good long time to get the battle out of their blood and to learn to readjust to civilian life, where the answers are different to all the problems, you know. But so, so now let's go to you, Don Knudsen, not a veteran, but a military brat. Yes. So what, why does that make you anti-military? Well, because I saw the military close up. Dad? Uh, you know, <laughs> because my dad was in the, well, he was, he was actually an Iowa farmer. And, and so he got an exemption during World War II. But then 1946, he was immediately drafted. And that was the end of the family farm in Iowa. So, so the military draft considered, contributed mightily to to the decline of the family farm. And, uh, and really, I, I didn't realize the, the sacrifice I made as a military brat until um, Mary Bisharat, a, a dear friend of mine who was a, a local peace activist, very, very vigorous. And uh, uh, when she passed away, there was a memorial. And uh, eight, her, her eight grandchildren spoke fondly about the contributions that she had made to their lives. And I, I, I reflected upon my own life, and I never even knew my, my grandparents because uh, my dad was stationed on the West Coast. The, uh, his family was in Iowa. My mom's mm -hmm. family was in Manitoba, Canada. And uh, I had no experience with, with family. So I was denied the nurturing environment of, of a family. And, and I can't say that my parents really knew what they were doing in, in, in parenting. And the well, military- Well, none of us really do. I mean, unfortunately. <laughs> that's right. You know, but, and, and then that's we why get the family, the... you have a family behind yes, you to, yes, to yes. help. And, that, and, and that's where Mary made, made such a mighty contribution to her children becoming fine, upstanding citizens. And, uh, and so, so, so I really felt denied 
in that way. And then, and then uh, to me, it is so bizarre that this country sends 18, 19, 20 year olds overseas uh, without, without direction. And, and, and they offer no, no sort of integration to learn about the native country. Because I, I lived in Japan three years during the, the Vietnam War because my dad was stationed in Japan. And, um, and, and I saw that the, that the uh, uh, fifth of Jim Beam was $1.25 in the BX, uh, uh, carton of cigarettes, a uh, buck uh, uh, 25. You know, so, so the military provides a keen opportunity to get hooked on alcohol and tobacco. Cheap. And cheap, <laughs> right. uh, on, the, on the cheap. And, and there's absolutely no integration between the bases and the in indigenous population right. there because it's an occupying army. Right. And it is so unnatural. No other countries do this. Only the United States has this network of huge uh, military bases around the world. That's one of and the things unnatural. that Putin said. It's Putin said, I have two bases. We have, Russia has, has two bases. One of them is a little place with a few sailors and a telephone. You know, that's the port in uh, Syria. <laughs> You know, and he said, and you have bases in 150 countries. You know, what are you? It's not us. And then, and then we ask about the Muslims. Why do they hate us after we kill a million? Uh, I wanted to ask you, Daniel, were you yes, a, a computer savvy when you were on that ship? Was part of your disaffection from the military project stuff that you learned on a computer? Uh, it's, it's stuff that I learned watching foreign news and foreign media. It's, it's the BBC, it's, it's reading Australian newspapers. It was, it was reading, it, not reading um, my own country's news and media because they didn't talk about a lot of the stuff that were, was going on with, in the war. They didn't talk about the mistakes we were making. They weren't talking about, um, there's, there's plenty uh, in those years uh, of, of the Iraq war during the surge that, that they weren't mentioning. And other countries were covering them. So I, I learned by uh, reading those websites, watching that news through the internet, of course. That's so, so interesting because I've thought of the fix of veterans or soldiers who are in the midst of a conflict and go to their computer and start having their eyes opened to some of the things behind it. Horrible fix because they're still there. Mm -hmm. Maria, so that, now let's get into what you say when you go to counter-recruit and what you talk about as other options. And please, all you f folks, this is one of the largest groups we've had. We hardly <laughs> fit on the screen. We, and we only have nine minutes, okay. <laughs> so we're going to have to feel free to break in. Maria, so what do you pr tell folks? Well, this committee was started about nine years ago roughly, and it's a four-part presentation when we get into the classroom. Um, we do it with vets and with non-vets. And before I continue, I'd like to mention that every year over a million young people drop out of high schools all over the country, over a million. <coughs> it's like 7,000 students every day. Oh. And that's because, one, they're not finding what they want in school, and they're going to the streets, they're going into the military, they're doing something they shouldn't be doing probably. <coughs> and it's, because it, it's also because partly and directly the military budget is eating up our budget, the military portion of the budget, which is now gonna be $605 billion in 2016, way over half of our discretionary spending. So, and if we just spend 700 billion, maybe we'd win a war. <laughs> <laughs> win, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so this presentation goes in with many goals. We go in, first of all, to inform, to give options, and we cut it into four parts. We, we go over how the military budget and how government spending impacts them. Even, even if you never joined the military, even if your parents didn't join the military, or your brother or your uncle didn't join the military, you're impacted as a student every day by what the government spends on the military. And we show them, I won't go into the details, but we show them visual things and every day when we do this every time that we do it someone someone's jaw drops because they didn't realize how much spending is going into the military budget the second part is so that's life before the military life during the military a vet talks to the student for about 15 minutes about what it's really like to be in the military the third portion is life after the military and that's when a vet also does it one of the other vets and discusses everything from 
training, boot camp, how you lose your rights, how you can't say no, how you can't quit this job because it's not really a job, you signed away, how you don't have time off, they own you. It's life during the military. And then, that, I'm sorry, that was before. Life after the military talks about post-traumatic stress disorder. If you were exposed to depleted uranium and how that will affect your children and your children's children, et cetera, Let's homelessness. Agent Orange that the guys were sprayed with. Exactly. Yeah, so before the military, during the military, after the military, and then a peace action volunteer steps in again for the fourth and final part of the presentation. And the peace action um, volunteer discusses life instead of the military. Hey, stay in school, finish. We talk to them about scholarships, grants that are available for the kids that want to go to school and don't have to join the military to get money for college, which right. they weren't going to get anyway, but we'll go into those details in the presentation. They won't, most of them never see a dollar because there are so many requirements. Even if you do your eight years, many, many vets never get the money. But that's a whole other presentation. No, but that's an important thing to say, right? It oh. is, exactly, and we go into detail about that. But even for the ones who do go, that come out, we talked about them how to get, how to get money, how to, um, we talk, some of them don't want to go to college, so we talked to them about vocational careers. Right. Um, mechanics, plumbers. You know how much money plumbers make and electricians? They certainly make more than uh, some professors. <laughs> <laughs> and some, well, I won't go into where I work. But um, so then we also talked to them about if you want adventure instead of the military, join the AmeriCorps, Peace Corps, Conservation Corps, protect the environment, serve your country. That's wonderful. But not carrying a weapon and being choice, faced with that horrible decision to kill or be killed. Right. Now, yeah. now, now, speak, any of you, to any of these aspects that have moved you, Barry or Daniel. Uh, I, I just say that when I went to college, it was almost free. I mean, we had to pay a few fees. We had to buy books. But it was almost free. Right. I know people now that have $200,000 worth of debt to go to college. They have $2,000 a month payment on their college loans. And it's just crazy. Uh, how are how are they expecting these people to spend money on anything else to stir up the economy and make it better? We're still not out of the recession. So this there drives are, people into the military. It drives them. Well, yeah. I, I don't know, Danny. I suspect you joined the military partly to get GI Bill. He used it. I used it. I used it and it cost me nothing to go to college. Danny's uh, used all of his up now and he's got to pay his own way. <laughs> oh, I'm not freeloading. But we only, we're at the five minute mark and it's see how fast this goes. I want to remind people if you're a teacher out there, if you know someone, a teacher, a child who's a teacher, who would be willing to invite people like this, think of what an interesting class you would have and how much this would interest the students in your class. To get a little touch of reality and what. What's really happening out there? And they can call Sacramento. Four four eight seven one five seven. Let's get it up. Yeah, I memorized that during our many wars. Four four eight seven one five seven. Here are the different people you can call, and um, sacpeace.org, Veterans for Peace. We'll bring that up on the screen. They can't see the website, folks. Um, veterans for Peace. Dot, what is it? Org. Dot org. org. E okay, easy enough. Um, another thing I want to mention is uh, I, I want to especially uh, teachers who um, teach in, in areas that are in a lower socioeconomic bracket. Yes, um, good point. Bracket. Uh, military recruits poor people. You don't, you don't see ROTC. At um, Yale. You don't, you don't see them in, in even high schools, your JROTC programs. You don't see them in, in um, uh, socioeconomic uh, economic neighborhoods in a higher bracket. You don't see it because those parents aren't gonna let their kids join the military. They don't have to join the military. Right. It, the war is poor people fighting poor people. That's what it is. Exactly. And, and they take advantage of um, people in, in a lower socioeconomic uh, class to, they, they take advantage of their um, inability to go to school, of their inability to find a job, to, to, to make them go to war. And it's, uh, it needs to change. That's, this is why they call it the poverty draft. Definitely. You know, and one of the best signs at the corner at 16th and J was always rich man's war, poor man's blood. Exactly. And yeah. it's way too true. Yeah. Way too true. Yeah. Do you and want to add wasn't, something? And it wasn't the military. It wasn't the peace activists who stopped the draft. It was the military who stopped the draft. They simply didn't want the dissidents to come into the and contaminate the pool. So, so that was uh, that. That is a clear reality. 
of uh, what the military has in store for you when you know they will program you to fit their needs. That's a good point because it's also true that poorer people most usually are easier to control because they don't have the sense of being able to fight for their rights. You know, they don't, don't feel the privilege of having rights in this country. More about this. Are, <laughs> have, how many schools do you visit? As many as we get invitations, so that's why it's so important it's to bring four, that four, eight, seven, one, five, seven. <laughs> Local. And we also need to mention the, the opt-out form. The No Child Left Behind Act requires um, high schools to give lists of their students, and they have access to home phone numbers, addresses. We've talked to students who went to the graduations this last spring, and the students told us, oh, they called me at home. They knew my name, they knew what classes I was in, and they told me- What's the opt-out form? The opt-out form is a form you can get online and take it to your school, and then they take you off the list. Go online anywhere and opt out. Opt out of this murderous pursuit, you know, and become part of the peace action. <laughs> and <laughs> also, here, I hope people, can you zoom in? Uh, <laughs> Dear Tom, and see my button here, because <clears throat> I just listened to Bernie's, oh, here, I'll come up if you can't come down. We love Bernie. I, and yeah, I think we all love Bernie. Yes. Uh, don't admit it if you don't. <laughs> because Bernie has been against these wars from the start. He filibustered against the Iraq war, gave a very moving speech, and he wants to change the economy so that the people at the bottom have other choices than, jo than joining the military. He wants to get the money moving at the bottom of the economy and up into the middle of the economy. And believe me, I, here's my prediction, I think he's going to win by a landslide. Mm, I, think I think Republicans so who are mm, making under 50000 well. a year, and that's 75% of our population makes under 50000 and 30% of our population makes 20 or less. All those people will be affected positively by Bernie's candidacy. And so tune in. Oh, it's too late for, uh, it's already passed. I want to thank Greg Pope, Joy Stephen Barasa, our producer and director. Carol Stevens did our graphics and Greg Pope, Joy did the audio. Greg Pope, Joy will do the playback. And Steve Barasa lit the set. Most of all, I want to thank Tom Rowe, who has with this camera and Ricky Kong, a new person joining us today. I hope you'll keep on coming. Keep coming back to Soapbox for only one reason. People really do matter.